The story you are about to witness unfolds on the campus of AB Tech Community College, right in the heart of Asheville. Here, an old, underutilized asphalt parking lot, nearly an acre in size, begins its transformation into a vibrant stormwater wetland education park. Watch as this once impervious expanse gives way to a living landscape, where water, plants, animals, and people interact and thrive. This grant-funded effort was spearheaded by Riverlink in close partnership with AB Tech. Blue Earth Engineering and Osgood Landscape Architecture led the project's vision, engineering, and design. Construction was brought to life through the skilled work of Stream Initiative, South Core Environmental, and High Country Grading. And behind it all stands a community of partners and supporters whose dedication made this transformation possible. Here, nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Asheville is a small, lively city surrounded by one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. Many believe this land is one of the safest places to be in regards to natural disasters and climate change. On Friday, September 27, 2024, North Carolina was struck by a once in a thousand year storm. Unprecedented tragedy that requires an unprecedented response. What can we learn from such a devastating catastrophe? How can we mitigate flood and erosion? One major takeaway is the power of water. After such an event, one is forced to have great respect for this element. What does it mean to work with nature in our modern world? How can we learn to live in harmony with our landscapes, even when most of that landscape is covered in concrete and asphalt? What happens to a raindrop when it meets the ground? Is that raindrop able to soak into the ground and replenish the ecosystem? Or is it being met with expansive hardscape that drains away this vital resource? Our conventional urban water management emphasizes the draining away of water from the city. This artificial approach does its job well, but at a cost. When the natural buffers of living systems are removed, it could have destructive results. What would happen if we shift this mindset from drain to retain? How would the force of water respond to the integration of living systems? I'm Renee Fortner, the Director of Programs at Riverlink. And Riverlink is an environmental nonprofit based here in Asheville, North Carolina. And our mission is to promote both the environmental and the economic vitality of the French Broad River watershed for all. This project is part of a, a larger initiative that Riverlink and our partners have been working on for years, and that is to improve and protect water quality in the French Broad River and the streams that flow into her. And this area on AB Tech's campus flows into a section of the French Broad River that is failing to meet water quality standards. And so we created a, a watershed restoration plan in 2020 in partnership with Blue Earth Engineering and Design. And we investigated water quality issues within three streams that flow into that section of the French Broad that's impaired. One of those streams is here on AB Tech's campus. It's called Haith Branch. And this small stream receives runoff from 14 acres of hard surfaces on AB Tech's campus. So this large volume of runoff previous to this project was piped directly into a forested area of campus and into Haith Branch, uh, delivering pollutants and creating erosion and sediment issues in Haith Branch. And then all of that was going on into the French Broad River. My name is Tim Ormond, and I work for Blue Earth Engineering. It's my company. I'm a professional engineer here in Asheville. Often, stormwater is thought about more as a problem, 
something that just needs to be mitigated and managed and moved off site. But this is really a different approach of celebrating water and providing a demonstration of how a more natural water cycle can function. And I believe this will be a great example project for other areas within the city of Asheville and beyond. My name's Ethan Vanderbleek. I work for South Core Environmental. It's important to have these spaces so that we see how conservation can be really aligned with urban space and urban design. I think we can take these sort of really broad concepts in conservation and apply them to spaces that are super close to home. We're in phase one right now, which is all the, we call it like rough grading. So digging out the ponds and the basins. There is a storm sewer system. We found that it wasn't located as shown on the survey. And additionally, the condition was poor. It was already corroding and falling apart in several locations. And as a result, a new storm sewer system had to be designed and installed and, and rerouted in order for the project to function. And then the last major challenge we ran into, as we were finishing up and coming up with the soil mixture to backfill for the plantings, I noticed a petroleum smell in some of the samples. And so I met out here with the contractor and we discovered that there was a pretty large uh, contamination of petroleum and uh, tetrachloroethylene, a dry cleaning solvent, which puts it into an even a more serious category. And it turned out that the contamination was actually in the area where the geosynthetic clay liner was planned to be installed. So that worked out perfectly in our favor that the liner was going to essentially encapsulate the contaminated soil that couldn't be removed. With the major excavation complete and the unforeseen challenges behind us, construction moved forward into the fine-tuning phase, the micro-grading. Here, precision mattered. Each contour was carefully shaped to guide water through the landscape just as nature intended, slowing, spreading, and sinking it in. Once the landform took its final shape, attention turned to the lowest basin, an area built on unstable fill soil. To ensure the wetland's long-term stability, a synthetic clay liner was installed. Without it, the risk of water seeping into the loose substrate could have led to erosion and even a landslide over time. The liner created a secure foundation, allowing the basin to hold water safely and function as intended. With the groundwork complete, life began to return. The team planted the entire site with a diverse array of native species. Each plant was carefully chosen to thrive in the shifting gradients of wet and dry. This vegetation played a critical role in reweaving the ecological fabric, filtering water, stabilizing soil, and creating habitat for life that would soon return. Now that we're here and the project is done, let's talk about the key components. So a key aspect of this project was to bring the flow above ground. And so we designed a, a flow splitter that's six feet in diameter. And what that does is when the, the stormwater is underground, it hits a, a baffle wall and it brings that stormwater up to the surface that then allows it to flow through this wetland system. And when we have very large storms, that, the flow goes over the wall and back down into the storm sewer system. So during a one inch storm, this wetland will receive about 144,000 gallons of stormwater that normally would just be released directly into the creek, creating erosion and other pollutant issues. And now instead, it's the, we're rewilding the water and it's, it's bringing new life. In a typical year here in Asheville, this wetland will treat about six million gallons of stormwater before it flows back into the creek. 
this circuitous system is a series of pools, basins, and swales that you'll see the water flowing through that goes through two deep infiltration basins before going through this circuitous wetland. Just like the, the flow splitter regulates the flow coming in, there is a, a, an outlet water level controller that also has a series of flashboards that will regulate how high the water can go in the wetland. So the flow is controlled both into the wetland and out of the wetland using these two hydraulic structures. My name is Helen Burrell and I work for AB Tech Community College. Students are really going to be involved in seeing how this wetland can function in, um, as part of a greater ecosystem. They're also going to be seeing plants um, in their native habitat in a wet environment, which is going to be educational for botany. The students are going to be using this area by taking samples, uh, especially when the wetland is getting water into it. Uh, the idea is to be taking chemical samples um, in real time and, and monitor and uh, do testing on that water to really see what kinds of inputs are coming into the wetland. My name is Ryan Ballard. Um, I'm with Osgood Landscape Architecture. Uh, I'm a landscape architect on the project. I think it's unique um, not only in urban development but in campus development. Typically these, these type of environments can be quite sterile and maybe even lacking diversity and what this does is it uh, creates an opportunity for biodiversity with the, the plant species um, and, and also the animal species that will be here. Joel Osgood, president and owner of Osgood Landscape Architecture. I think this question of, of resilience post uh, Helene is near and dear and incredibly important to us. And I think just the lived shared experience has made it more acute how important it is to be thinking at this watershed scale. Political boundaries, districts, uh, property boundaries seem to matter much less. The forces of nature are a clear boundary, um, but inherently channeling this creative engineering and science-based response uh, allows for this channeling of, of the collective imagination towards something better. I think even doing this in situ at a small scale in a residential setting in our backyards uh, and the cumulative positive response of doing stormwater ecology wherever and whenever we can, that education response and being able to leverage and learn from this and applying it in other ways towards green infrastructure will have a lot of weight and positivity beyond just the scope of this project. This is one of the many ways we can work with nature. By slowing the destructive force of water and retaining it within the ground, we can minimize disaster while creating life. This all started off as an idea. It slowly seeped into the hearts of many. When we come together in respect for water, the natural world reciprocates.